favorite right now is the result of chronic stress. This show is about helping career individuals to actually feel empowered and to have tools that they can use in their daily lives because I truly adore, respect, and want to help those that have dreams and they want to build and create in their lives. And I want to show them that they can do this without breaking their bodies or relationships in the process. Thank you for joining us today at Women Have Needs To TV. Women have needs to. Right now, I need to stop being the bully. Today, we're talking with Sherry Leopold. Uh, dream big with Sherry Leopold. And thank you, Sherry, for being with us today. I'm so excited to talk about this topic today. Oh my gosh, it's such a good topic. And I am so excited. And I, I was telling you earlier, this is going to go by so fast because this is such a cool topic and you're going to tell us what it's all about because we're going to uh, dream big with you and we're going to learn how to stop being the bully and we're going to talk about, so you have a book called Self-Bullying, right? When Yes, what to do when the bully what is to you. What do when the bully is you, okay? So we're going to cut that out right now. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much, Linda, for having me here today. I'm so excited to be here and I'm very passionate about helping women especially stand up and stand out. And that really comes from a place of having that really strong internal power and that core inside of you that says, you know what, I'm okay just how I am. I don't need to change anything. I can change it if I choose, but I don't have to, I'm okay exactly how I am. And part of the thing that tends to chip away at that feeling is that pattern of self-bullying. Is it all right if I just kind of give a definition of what that is? Absolutely. This is your show. All right. So self-bullying is exactly kind of what it sounds like. So self being one's nature or character and bullying is someone who is a blustery, quarrelsome person who habitually intimidates a weaker person. Mm. So self-bullying, when you put them together, is actually you being that blustery, quarrelsome person, habitually badgering yourself. And you think, oh, who does that? But the reality is we all do that. <laughs> there isn't anyone who's immune. We do it all the time. It just, and I can tell you, it sounds like this, Linda. Oh my gosh, I, I got to lose my baby fat too, but my baby's 32. Uh, yeah. And women laugh and support each other. But what we're doing really is we're supporting you to tear yourself down. And that's part of my mission within the Stop Self-Bullying movement that I am leading is we have to stop enabling our sisters and our brothers to doing this. It doesn't matter if it's couched in humor, it's still self-bullying. It's so true. And I even, I am guilty of it. And, and it's not because I'm trying to bully myself. It, it, you know, sometimes I'll say, oh yeah, that was stupid. Sometimes I'm just so stupid. I do stupid things. I say stupid things and I, I verbalize it. And I, my nutritionist, Dr. Michelle, thank you, Dr. Michelle. She said, Linda, I want you to do me a big favor. And I said, what is that? And she said, I want you to stop talking negatively about yourself right now from this day forward. And so now I have that in the back of my head, you know, oh, I'm not supposed to say that. That's right. And I teach a technique called snap. And, and so this is what you'll get from me if you hear it. 
uh, and it stand, it's an acronym, uh, and it stands for two acronyms for SNAP, but it's speaking negatively attracts pain and start now activating power. So when you know that technique, you can teach it to your girlfriends, you can teach it to your tribe and your inner circle. And when you say that all she has to do is do that or because I have a sarcastic humor, I might say, don't make me snap you, Linda. <laughs> because you know, you know that what I'm saying to you is that, hey, it's time to stand up. You know, I stand love it. up, you know, power up. So exactly. That's what the snap is. Exactly. And I love, I love that all you have to do is this. I remember when I was a little girl, all my mother had to do, I was doing this one day on the table as she and her girlfriend were talking and it was of course louder than this because it was a hard wood table and all she had to do is look at me my mother had the power of the look <laughs> and so just a simple snap you know i react to stuff like this i guess i i probably most people do but the thing is is if we're not aware of it then we're just right. going to keep on doing it and i think that's the thing we've gotten into a culture of where it's okay to just badger yourself and say terrible things to yourself about yourself. And when you're with your girlfriends, they're like, oh yeah, I know. But here's the thing, the auditory part of that is, you know, even if you're at a cocktail party and you your friend does this to you or is standing and, and does this and even doesn't make a sound, what, what you're doing to your girlfriend is saying, hey, reframe that. You need to say that in a different way or stop it essentially. Uh, and, and power up, right? And, and the thing is, sometimes we come off to people when we're doing it as this really negative energy when, when with the, that's not who we think we are, right? right? And so we need that awareness and we need that network of, of girlfriends in our tribe who will say, hey, that's not who you are. That's not how you want to show up. Snap out of it. It's so true because I think of myself as a very positive, motivating person. You know, I am the chief inspirer of women have needs too. I'm the chief inspirer of my life. Of, of, right. uh, I try to be the chief inspirer of everybody's life. Yet, I still will self-bully and not intentionally. I don't think it, <clears throat> I know it's not intentional, but it doesn't matter because yeah. it's a recorder still going on in my head, right? Absolutely. And Dr. Amen of the Amen Clinics always says it's like ants running around in your head. That's what he calls them. Automatic Ugh. negative thoughts, ants, kill those ants. And I'm just like, it's the same thing, whether you snap, whether you think about it as, you know, killing the ants, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you remember that you are the boss of you and you get to choose what you think. And then you get to choose what you do about what you think. And this is why, you know, having some modicum of control on these thoughts is so important because, and people say, well, I can't help it. I'm just, that's just the way I am. Like, no, because it's a choice. It's a it's choice. choice. To Thank think you. That way. You have a choice. I, I, I don't totally. like to hear that. Well, it's just the way I am. Bull monarchy. Yep. You ever heard that word before? Bull monarchy. Okay. We choose how we are. And and so can, can you work with me for a minute, Sherry? Yeah. So sure. what if I know I did or said something stupid or I just, you know, and maybe it wasn't stupid, but I call it stupid. All right. Mm -hmm. So what's the alternative? When I, when I catch myself doing something I shouldn't have done or forgetting something that I shouldn't have forgotten and the automatic response is, oh my God, I did something. I, I did it again. What, what's the alternative? I think, I, I think the switch in the mind comes from what, what can I learn from this? You know, how can I make another choice that will change the outcome? So I'm famous for saying choices create change, mm. change your choices and your choices change. I love that. So, so here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you do something on a one-time basis, like people, especially women do this when they're in relationships. If they find themselves in a bad relationship or being treated poorly, they somehow internalize that and say, that's all about me and I'm not a good person. I'm attracting bad things or whatever. But the reality is it's about the choice. You might've made the choice for that relationship, but you can change the choice and say, I'm no longer going to do that. Now I'm going to choose this. 
that's the whole thing about choices is you don't have one, you have millions. And we'll have one another second from now and another second from then. There's never a time in your life where you'll never have a choice. Sometimes all the choices seem poopy. <laughs> there's times when that happens, but there's always going to be another choice to be made. And if you find out, like you said that, and it like went out your head and you caught yourself and you're like, oh, why didn't I say it? Just say, I, you know, I'm going to just say something different right on the heels of it. Say something different. Give your brain something else to process. I was going to you know, ask you. Oh, I'm so stupid. Then say, you know what? That wasn't my best choice. I'm going to do this. Okay. I was going to ask, <clears throat> excuse me. I was going to ask you if there was an exercise for that. Um, and it, it, I actually do it, one of the things I teach and it's actually on the, on the cover of the book. I don't know if you can see this is a bat here with a foot. And I actually teach people to stand on that bat. So I say that we beat ourselves up with that bat. And when we say things like I'm fat or I'm stupid, it leaves those words on the bat. And then every time we say that, we're hitting ourselves again and we re-injure ourselves. So the reason there's a person's foot on the bat is that's part of the technique. When you learn the snap and you learn how to start now activating that power and you stand up and you stand out exactly as you are, that's the same as putting that foot on the back. When I put one foot on the back, and this is why you'll notice on the front cover, there's one foot on the back, on the back cover, there's two. Your one foot is when you're stepping on it and you're saying, I can do this. But see, if you only had one foot on the back, I could probably still pick it up. Mm -hmm. And you could still pick it up and beat yourself up with it. But when you fully stand up and stand out and put both feet on that back, you can't pick it up and nobody else can pick it up and beat you with it either because you're the boss applesauce i'm on my bat and i'm not gonna allow it and i'm not gonna allow myself to do it either right that's love you giving that. yourself the control i love that analogy i used to play a lot of softball i started playing softball when i was nine years old and i hit myself with the bat accidentally you know a few times you know in the shin usually um, sometimes in the back, but not, not, that was rarely, but I can tell you, it hurts when you hit yourself yeah. with the bat and hit your toe. So when, and I love the analogy because you don't realize you're hurting yourself with that bat, but you are. And so yes, and sometimes people hit you with your bat, they drop the bat and leave. But the problem with it that people don't understand is Linda, if, if somebody said something like, Sherry, I don't know why you think you're that important or whatever. And then I think, oh my God, uh, what's wrong with me? And then I go, oh, Linda, do you know what so-and-so said? See, there's the transfer of the bat. They pick the bat up, whack me with it, told me I was unworthy, but they drop it and leave. I pick it up. Now I tell you, I tell my mom, I call my best friend. I'm hitting myself over and over and over with the bat. And part of this process is to stand on that bat and say, you know what? No, I give it no significance. I'm not, I, whatever they said it, that's their thing. They're coming to me and operating in my space from where they stand. You know, that's their insecurity. If they're trying to make me feel small, I'm going to stand on my bat. You don't get to write on it. I'm not going to beat myself up by going and telling 20 people. I would say, just go do something amazing. Just go do something amazing. You'll forget all about whatever they said about you. I love it. So so the proper response when somebody says something negative? I feel like the more proper response when somebody gives you something that you don't own is just to, to actually say, you know, acknowledge that they're saying it, but just say, you know, I appreciate you sharing that with me, but you can also say something else I teach, which is, you know, no, thank you. I don't receive that. I don't receive that. So, and I do this with a, a heart in the hand for, I, no, thank you. I don't receive this because I love myself. And that's a very strong, uh, positive, mm -hmm. forceful thing saying, listen, you can try to dump anything you want on me, but I don't receive it. I know who I am. I know whose I am in, in my case. 
And I, I do not receive what you're saying. I love it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I should show you this glass I just picked up yesterday. It's going to be for sale on my website. So it has this nice little lid. I don't have wine in it today, but it could be a wine glass if you want. And of course it says women have needs too on it, but I need love a sip it. because I'm getting a dry throat. But okay, so. It's beautiful. Well, thank you. Um, I'll send you one. Um, <laughs> Can't wait to right. get one. <laughs> Uh, so sometimes, and I know that this is not what your book is about, but there are times when somebody might give you constructive criticism. This is not the time to say, I don't receive that. Is that true? Correct. And, and I think there's a difference, um, in when somebody is saying, it's kind of like the saying you shouldn't should on people. Uh, so when somebody <laughs> is saying... You, sh saying, well, you, Linda, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't should. You, should should, you shouldn't should on someone. I love that. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> and and so that's kind of the thing when somebody's trying to tell you how to be, that's different. That's not constructive criticism. If I said, "Hey, Linda, have you thought about you know maybe incorporating blank or trying this?" That's something that's constructive criticism or saying. Hey, you know, you look so beautiful when your hair is down. Have you thought about wearing your hair down instead of up? That's kind of a, a, a thing that gives someone the chance to think about what you're saying. But when I, if I am saying to you, you don't look good with your hair down or you don't look good with your hair up, that's not constructive criticism. You know, mm -hmm. that's being a, a mean girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we want to make sure that whenever we're, exchanging uh, information to another person, especially in our inner circle. You know, we sometimes say things to people. We want to make sure that we are saying something to them that allows them the choice to think about that, to consider making a change, right? But that's just it. That goes back to the whole thing. You can say anything you want to somebody, just know that they have the choice to receive it and the choice to change it. And their change, if you don't do things in a, in a kind and respectful manner, their choice might be to change your relationship. That's true. And that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some people are not for you. That's <laughs> right. That. It's so funny. I was coming out of the elevator in my building the other day. And, and uh, so I'm getting in the elevator and somebody says, okay, now we can talk about you. I said, that's fine. I said, it's none of my business what you say about me, <laughs> right? It took me a long time to, to get to that, you know, point where I don't care, you know? It, 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 and and it, it was reading it in a book that said, it's, it's none of my business what somebody says behind my back, right? Um, and the other thing is they'll always operate, and I, I talk a little bit about this in the book, it's so important to understand that when people say things to you like that or say things about you, I had an experience where this is somebody called me blunt. I had to look up the word and I'm like, no, blunt means rude and I'm not rude, but I will always be directly honest with you. Direct. I'm not hurtful, but yeah. I will be direct with you. And the thing is what I had to really understand is that that person doesn't like directness and therefore put it, tried to put it back onto me. But see, here's the thing. I'm okay with being direct. I'm okay with who I am. Right. So therefore it's not my problem. It's their, it's their choice if they want to have that relationship with you or not. Correct. Yeah. I've and been and told, it's my choice too, you know? Yeah. Your choice as well. <clears throat> I've been told I'm, I'm a, uh, brutally honest. I haven't been told I'm direct, but I have been told I'm brutally honest. And when somebody asks me something, I am going to be honest with them. You know, right. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm just going to tell them if you're asking me, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> right. Well, and that's just it. I think that goes back to having that internal power of me and be able to be really, really clear about being okay with yourself. Yeah. When someone isn't 100% okay with who they are, anyone can come along and uh, 
poke the insecurity bear, like, right. All of a sudden yes. it's like a trigger. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not any good. I don't, you know, people don't like me. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not this, I'm not that. It, it just stokes that fire. Right. And truthfully with any of us, it just it takes a little bit of it. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, we all have days I, I always say to people, we all have days where we don't feel the strongest human on the planet. Right. right. But that's not the point. The point is just knowing that we know who we are and that we are powerfully us. And I say at the end of the book, but I, and I know that I've said this to you. One of the things I say is you are an unrepeatable miracle. There's literally nobody mm -hmm. like you on the planet because you're like one in 412 trillion in your DNA. You aren't repeated. There isn't anybody like you. So when you stop for a second, you say, well, I'm not strong enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. The reality is there isn't anybody like you. So who's doing it better than you? Nobody. Because right. you are you. You are you. Your message, the way you share things and the way you are sitting in that seat, interviewing people that you're interviewing. There are other people doing different shows and things, but they're not going to do it like Linda because Linda is a one of a kind. You right. are an unrepeatable miracle. Period. So do you recommend uh, a mantra for people who are struggling with this self-bullying to, to do that in the morning? Or how, what do you recommend for that? I, I like for people to have three main things that they say. So like one of the things I say um, when I wake up is I am an unrepeatable miracle. And I say, thank you, God, for giving me the gifts and talents that I have and that I can use them to serve others. Like, that's what I say to I myself. You can say anything you want, but the thing is to put out into the universe, if you will, what it is that you, what your expectation is, right? Mm. If you say, I don't want to suck today, the chances <laughs> are it's not going to go well. But if you say, <laughs> I am strong, I am powerful, I am unique, then you're likely going to draw in and attract people who are going to reflect that to you. That's why your, your inner circle, I call it your farm, your friends and relatives matter. These people are so important to you. And when you become stronger, sometimes people who've been with you a long time don't like the changes because mm -hmm. they're used to you being the way you've always been. Right. But we are always in growth, right? We are always growing. And when that's you the, level the up, your network levels up with you. I love it. I love it. Well, that's the goal to keep growing, right? Yes. <clears throat> All right. So let's tell the viewers, because we have to close, let's tell the viewers how they can get a hold of that book, how they can get a hold of you, and um, what, what, what you can do to help them. Well, I have a couple different things. I would love for people to join my WOW Warrior tribe. WOW yes. stands for the War on Words Warriors. Uh, and we are in a constant battle with the self-bullying. So that's why it's a wow warrior. It stems from people hearing the title of the book and going, wow. But <laughs> it actually stands for War on Words Warriors. And that is on Facebook. There's a group that you can join for that. Okay. Um, and I'm doing a 28 day or 28 ways in 28 days to love more intentionally challenge in there right now. So I'd love for you to join me. Um, also, you can get the book at amazon.com. Uh, you can check out my author page on there. There's a whole bunch of stuff and you can get to it through my website at sherryleopold.com as well. Wonderful. That is so exciting. Sherry, it was so good to have you here today. Thank you so much for sharing uh, your wonderful war on words. I just love everything about you. And I just, I just love Aww. the message that you give and stop this, th stop the self-bullying and it's, um, self-bullying what to do when the bully is you. Okay. Check it out. Okay. Check out, um, everything Sherry has to offer because she is just amazing. Thank you so much. And, uh, women have needs to right now. I need to stop self-bullying. Let that That's be right. today. You know what? Stand up and stand out because you do. And you are an unrepeatable miracle, exactly as you are with no qualifiers. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sherry. And Thank we look forward you. to seeing you soon. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.